What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the e-commerce influence podcast. My name is Austin Bronner, and normally you hear my co-host Andrew Foxwell chime in right about now. But today is a solo episode. Andrew couldn't make it, but it's show business. The show must go on. We must record. We must bring uh, these new podcasts to you. So today. This episode, I'm really, really excited about. It's an episode that I have been kind of in the works bringing together for a while. It came from an email that I got from a listener about two months ago. They said, they reached out, they're like, hey, you know, we hear a lot about email marketing from you. We hear a lot about Facebook advertising and Instagram advertising from Andrew. What about YouTube ads? What are people doing on YouTube? What is successful over there? Who's doing it? How are they doing it? Can you bring an episode that kind of breaks down what's going on over there? So I reached out to my network to find the person that'd be best to bring on the show. And I found the perfect person. His name is Tom Breeze. He runs the website viewability.com. No, viewability.co.uk. He was very clear. .co.uk. It's an agency and they manage YouTube ads for some of the top Uh, marketers across the land, people like Frank Kerr and Neil Patel, and also a lot of e-commerce businesses as well. So this episode, we dive deep into what's working on YouTube, how to set up your your YouTube, how to to actually get started. We answer the question, will YouTube ads work for me, which is a really big one. And we describe the difference between advertising on Facebook and advertising on YouTube, how to get started. It's a, it's a full YouTube ads 101 free commerce episode. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. Um, without further ado, let's bring in Tom and welcome him to the show. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. I am really excited to chat uh, that, you know, got connected by, um, by our mutual friend, James Shramko and, I've uh, been excited to chat with you to learn a little bit more about YouTube ads. You know, we've had a couple of people reach out and ask questions uh-huh. like, oh, you've been you've been talking about Facebook and Instagram. What about YouTube? Um, so I'm excited. We've given our guests a little bit of a background on you, but why don't you take about, you know, a minute or so, tell us about you personally, and then you know, give us an overview of your your marketing expertise. Okay, yeah, of course. So yeah, my name is Tom Breeze, and um, I'm based in the UK, as you can probably tell by my accent. And um, I run an agency here. We it's called Viewability, and we are a YouTube ads agency. So we don't do anything apart from YouTube advertising, and that's the two sides of advertising on YouTube, which is the ad creative. So we're creating um, very high converting videos, and then we also run ad accounts on AdWords, uh, which is soon to be called Google Ads. Um, and yeah, so basically we work with clients, um, and we are uh, like a a traditional agency from a standpoint of, we kind of take on all the, um, all the video creative and take on the advertising, but we, our financial model is very different. So instead of like a monthly fee or a percentage of ad spend, we work on a CPA agent, uh, CPA deal. So that means we get paid per lead or per sale. And, uh, we just agree that with a client. And that's good because it means we can partner up with our um, clients in a way that feels like it's a no risk for them, but it means that we can really scale and, and grow together. Um, so that's the that's the agency. And um, yeah, we, we specialize in YouTube advertising. My background has been, I come from a psychology background, uh, studying it and then working with a lot of um, different uh, as a, in a consultancy role. But then um, more recently, um, well, I say more recently, about 10 years ago, I, I started focusing a lot more in the video space and that grew my first business. And ever since then, I've stuck with video, stuck with advertising and the two just met in the middle, really. And that's um, now what I do now. It's just video advertising and our focus is just YouTube. So coming from a, a psychology background, working in the video space, why you know, you guys have, have really planted your flag on YouTube advertising. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. I think even on your site, it says like your tagline is YouTube advertising is our thing, right? Which is very, very clear about what you guys are doing. Why, <laughs> yeah. why did you stick your stake in the ground on YouTube advertising and why should people be focusing on it right now? So I, I was running a lot of videos 
on YouTube. I was like doing the classic vlogger thing um, quite a while ago. Um, if you go and check out the videos of me from quite a while ago, they're quite embarrassing, but <laughs> but still they're there and they, they kind of helped me grow my first business. Um, and the I just realized the impact you can have on YouTube is huge. I see a lot of my clients might do really well on Facebook and Instagram and they're growing their companies really, really quickly. And they say it feels very different when they start advertising on YouTube. It's a very different type of advertising because you're getting in front of a very different type of audience. And it means you have to have a different skill set and a different way of thinking about the whole platform. But the biggest impact you have on YouTube is that when someone sees your video on YouTube, it's very rare for them to forget it. Normally, I mean, if anyone says, oh, have you seen that video? It's normally going to be kind of this, this, they remember it because they saw it on YouTube typically. And it's where the world goes to watch video. Um, so having had the background of psychology, looking to understand how people think and what makes them tick, YouTube was just that platform that felt so right for me. And it was really before Facebook started really taking off. And that's, I got my, found my feet with YouTube and as a result, I was stuck there. And we did start migrating across to Facebook and did some Facebook campaigns and were successful with it. But um, we realized that our niche and our, our thing that we were really good at that differentiated us was just this understanding of how the platform of YouTube works and how people go to YouTube for a very different reason than Facebook. And as a result, we've just had a lot of success and many clients come through us for that specific thing of YouTube. And so we just know our thing and we stick in our lane. Um, I know that you had Greg on your last uh, podca podcast episode and um, that was really interesting because essentialism is one of those things for me where I, I read the book and I was like, this is so me. It's like, I'm just sticking my lane, know my YouTube advertising and we just get very, very good at it. Um, so that's, I suppose, why I've stuck in my flag in the ground and said YouTube advertising is our thing, so to speak. Sure. Well, I'm excited to get into the different reasons people watch YouTube. But before we do that, just so we're all like everyone listening is on the same page, as I know this has been changing and evolving as Google's evolving, what type of advertising is even available on YouTube? Like different types of placements. What can you even what can you do? Yeah, so that's a very good question. There's, there's a lot you can do. Um, and there's some very common areas to explore as well. So you've, you've got like advert, the most common adverts are going to be the true view adverts and true viewers because of the, the way that you pay for these views. Um, you only pay for when someone engages with your video and um, with the true view style of video ad. And those ones are the, the typical ones you'll see where a video will play. And then in the bottom right hand corner, um, like you might do, well, you click play on a video and then a video will come up in front of it. And that's like the pre-roll ad or the in-stream ad it's called. And you have that kind of five second skip ad button, which most people feel like those can be the most annoying adverts in the world, but more and more people are getting used to it. And, um, yeah, YouTube advertising is kind of known for those pre-roll ads on YouTube where you have the, the skip, the, um, the five second button. The, the other forms of advertising, sometimes you'll see videos at the top of the search results. Uh, so if you type in a keyword into YouTube and you look at the results, there's often a video at the very top of the search results there. And they can be on the right hand side when you're watching videos as well. So those are called discovery ads and you will pay when someone clicks to play your video there. Um, so yeah, so with a discovery ad, you, you pay per click. Um, when someone decides to view your video, but with the in-stream ads, the pre-roll ads we talked about previously, those ones you only pay when someone watches past 30 seconds or decides to click to your website. So that means if someone watches 29 seconds of that video and then decides to press the skip ad button, you won't pay a penny. So it really means that you're getting in front of a very good audience that you only pay for when it's actually relevant to your audience. So it's a, it's a really nice kind of deal that you get with YouTube on that front. And it means you can run some very effective campaigns and um, you gather all the data, of course. So that's always really helpful for honing in the campaigns, but that really does give you a head start sometimes. The, there's other forms of advertising as well. You may see like these ads that are six seconds on YouTube. Those are called bumper ads and you pay per, um, per thousand impressions there. So it's a slightly different model. Um, and then you have other forms of advertising uh, that you can get, get into, which is part of the mastheads of YouTube, which is where you might hire the, or, or kind of rent out the front page of YouTube in a particular country um, that can get very expensive. But I'd only recommend getting into that when so you've got a lot of data and you know what you're doing or have kind of huge TV star budgets. That's a different ballgame altogether. But for the vast majority of people who are 
getting into um, YouTube advertising for the first time. I think that TrueView style of video ad, which is those um, the in-stream ad and the discovery ad, that's the best place to get started. That sounds that, that sounds great. I've seen a lot of those ads. I mean, every single time you go on YouTube, you find <laughs> they're they're pre-rolling. Sometimes they're interesting. The Wix one, I was just looking at. Wix is a really good one. <laughs> yeah. The guy's like, oh, I just built this dope website on Wix. Let me show you how, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, exactly. The uh, you mentioned this earlier. I thought it was uh, you said that people are on YouTube for different reasons, and you know potentially even different reasons than Facebook. What are some of the different reasons that people use YouTube? How does that impact the way that you advertise to them? So yeah, I mean the best way to think of it. I mean YouTube explain it in a way where they say someone on Facebook is almost leaning back when they're on Facebook. So this means that you might be scrolling through your newsfeed, you lean back, you're not necessarily fully engaged, but you're just maybe distracted and you're just looking through uh, your newsfeed and something has to jump out at you to, to grab your attention. Whereas with YouTube, it's different. With YouTube, you're leaning in and this means you're kind of, you're much more engaged. And most people go to YouTube for four main reasons. One, because um, they want to know something, um, they might want to do something, they want, might want to go and buy something, or they want to be inspired by something. And those four reasons are really key to understanding how YouTube is different to Facebook. So Facebook, you might be kind of looking to be distracted or connecting with your community or your friends, et cetera. Uh, whereas YouTube, you're going there with a purpose and intent, and you're looking for information. Um, so you get the people that want to be inspired, and that makes up about half the people that are going to YouTube. It's actually 53% people watching Justin Bieber and Lady Gaga and that type of thing and, and more. Um, but then a lot of people are going to YouTube because they want information there and then. They're um, typing in um, keywords about certain topics. They might be looking up how-to videos. Um, and for e-commerce in particular, what can be really handy is to, to know that people are going there to review um, products or see unboxing videos. And that's the perfect time to be getting in front of people with these in-stream ads, with these discovery ads and, and showcasing the product and showing people why they should be considering your product when thinking about buying something. So this is kind of the ideal way to think about YouTube is, is to think you're almost getting in front of people that are um, looking for that information. They're leaning in, they're in, like wanting to find that information. And that just kind of gives you a bit of a head start. You know that they're already motivated. So it doesn't, you don't need to do this huge uh, distracting start. You just need to be relevant. And if you can be relevant, you'll really cut through everything else. So if they're looking up a review of a certain product and you sell a product that's very similar, it's very easy to say, okay, so if you're looking to buy a product just like this, let me tell you what you should know about uh, before you go and buy that product. And that's just, this is kind of just keeping really relevant at the very start of the video, really kind of does all the work of getting someone to pay attention to your video. And that's why I think that YouTube can be that much more powerful than these other platforms is because you're, whilst you might have to pay a little bit more to acquire a view or to acquire a, a lead um, or a potential customer, you'll be getting in front of people that are so much more ready to go and buy that um, it makes up for it because you might find that whilst it costs you more to get them to the website, you'll probably find that your actual cost per conversion, your cost per sale is going to be better than a lot of other platforms. Well, let's, let's talk about that. You, you mentioned about pricing and that might be more expensive. Um, how, how does the pricing, what do you generally see? Like the, and I guess when I look at YouTube, you often see a lot of people selling information products, uh, higher ticket items there, doing those pre-roll ads uh, when they find some how-to videos or they can kind of put a pre-roll ad. You, you know, I know you've worked with information marketers like Frank Kern, Neil Patel. What is the biggest difference between selling information products and physical products on YouTube? And is there a kind of a level, like a price point that you find works and a price point that doesn't work? Like we find on, on Facebook, you know, you kind of, I, I generally look at people who have maybe a $70 average order value, $80 average order value and above as a place that will actually mm. work. Do you see the same thing on YouTube? Is it different? Um, and what does that difference look like? This is such a 
this is a kind of question where I can go down the rabbit hole sometimes because sure. it kind of, it's a really interesting uh, question to ask. So in terms of if you wanted to compare Facebook to YouTube and for the costs, what I normally say to people is that you'll probably pay more to get in front of your audience and get that message across to them but it'll probably work out in the end because they're so much more motivated to get someone to your website. Having seen a YouTube ad, they would have watched an ad for maybe two minutes and then thought, okay, yeah, this is for me actually, but they've already been motivated. They got there to your video when they're already motivated. They then watched your video and then they decided to go to your website. So it's a much higher quality click than most of the platform, most of the platforms. So that's to, to bear in mind when it comes to your product that you're selling, there's a few considerations. One is the fact that when it comes to the price point you're going to choose, obviously you need to choose a, a number that's going to be right for your conversion rates. That's really important. So let's say, for example, um, you're selling something for $500 straight off a YouTube ad. It probably means you're going to be working with a very low conversion rate if, if it's if it's not very qualified traffic. If it's remarketing traffic, that's a de- another thing because you may say that someone's got to your website, got to your checkout page, and then you've shown them a video ad that's going to be a slightly different um, idea. But what you want to do is have a price point where you have a lot of conversion volume going through those pixels. So if someone buys, they hit the thank you page and it fires your pixel. You want to have a lot of that activity, but a, a significant milestone for you as a company. So this is why I kind of talk about this in a service-based um, model. Like, So for a service-based model, you normally find you can acquire a lead for pretty cheap, but then you'll probably find that um, you're going to be building that relationship and asking for something for a much higher price point, and there's going to be a lot of margin within it. So that's why a lot of businesses are done really well with advertising on YouTube. But when there's a lot of margin, you've got a lot of room to play, and then you can scale out pretty quickly. With e-commerce and when you're selling products, and there's probably going to be a slightly smaller margin there, you need to be savvy, but the reason why you want to have a lot of traffic going through uh, or a lot of volume going through your conversion pixel is because AdWords and Google Ads will learn very quickly and the AI will really start to support you in your advertising efforts. So when you have a lot of data going through that conversion pixel, it has to be um, a milestone that's important for the business. So it has to be like a significant sale, maybe like $50 or so. If you get that price point going and you get a lot of sales going through it and then you plug in the AI um, of Google and the, and the intelligence it has, it can start running really successful campaigns for you. So I know that kind of I went down the rabbit hole a little bit. Hopefully that explains things. Um, you want to have a big enough margin, of course, to make a lot of profit. That really helps with a product. But you also want to make sure that you are driving traffic so it it shows the pixel, okay, we can get a lot of people like this because then Google can just really help you with your build out of your campaigns. Sure. So I think that that makes a lot of sense. And especially the latter group, the group that you're talking about that has a lot of volume going through the conversion pixel. A lot a lot of um, our listeners are going to be in that boat, right? Where they're driving tons of people through and, and, and a lot of that comes from front end traffic. You know, they can go on Facebook and spend a lot of money to drive directly to sales, comes through the conversion pixel at to say 50 or $120, something like that. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of that information. So what you're saying, just so I I, I understand (laughs) for my own edification, is that Google will then take that and it's very similar to a lookalike audience on Facebook where they will then create a lookalike of the people that came through the conversion pixel or how do they use that information to then help you target these new leads uh, is it cold traffic or how are they using that information and what type of audience are they creating off of that conversion pixel? Yeah. Okay. So, so it's not necessarily just to build a lookalike audience, which is what sure. you can do with YouTube. They call it a similar audience. Um, but instead what you might do when you first build out your campaigns, you might build it out to say, right, I'm going to do this manually to begin with. And you build a manual campaign. Um, it's actually when you set it up, you used to say no goal because you're going to do it and you're going to tweak the numbers yourself. You're going to say, here's how much I'm willing to pay for a, um, for a view, for example, and you run it. So you're kind of like you're tweaking those numbers based on the targeting options you've chosen. But, um, what I, what I was really saying is that with the pixel, if you get a lot of data coming through the pixel, what you can do is you can build a campaign type that says, um, it's part of a platform that's been recently, re- um, 
released to the public and we had access for as a beta for a long time but the 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 beauty of this um this offering is called true view for action and it means you can set up campaigns whereby google are recording everything and you no longer have to choose your cost per view and do things manually you just tell google okay i think my customers are coming from here but you have a load of data that, that i don't have access to and they'll optimize by 4,000 data points that you just don't have access to as a human um, or wouldn't be able to uh, process. But when you give those, give that data and enough of that data to Google, it will mean you can really um, dial in the campaigns without having to, um, without having to op- be optimize it yourself sometimes. Actually, Google will take over. Okay, that makes sense. So it's using the information from the conversion pixel to help optimize the campaigns that you're running on YouTube and improve those consistently over time. Exactly. Yeah, it'll just dial it in, and it'll, I mean, I'm not to say that it'll be it'll get it right 100 percent of the time. Sure, sure, sure. But um, but it's a good idea if you if you're having a lot of data go through a significant pixel, then um, it can really help you grow and scale your campaigns. Um, so th- when it comes back to pricing, and that's where it kind of started this conversation, it's, it's kind yeah. of like. It's, it's being really aware of your price points. Now, say, for example, you did have a $500 product and that's all you've got. That's fine, too. But it might just take you a little bit of time to get to that point where you can start using that data um, to because you might have smaller volumes of data going through that pixel. But, um, yeah, I think we've got quite technical very quickly and hopefully that's been useful. <laughs> no, but, um, I, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I hope it's useful as well. I think it has been at least for, for me to understand how it's working and how um, how you can use some of that information. I think one, one of the questions that usually people will reach out and ask me is like, what do you what do you know about YouTube ads? Do you think it's going to work for our business? And uh, I think that's a great, great question. And that's that's usually the question going on in someone's head when they've had some success on other platforms. And they're like, okay, we've gotten to a certain point. We, I was just talking to a, to a, to a company based out of New York and they just had a lightning rod growth. They've gone, they started, they really launched back in November and are doing mm-hmm. like $5 million. Uh, they've done like $5 million since November. So they've gone, they've gone just straight up and every single mm-hmm. month they're just doubling and all basically it's all coming from Facebook and Instagram ads. And we're talking and you know, at that point they basically have an arbitrage opportunity, not really a business yet. They've just got a they, they can know they can spend money on Facebook and Instagram and they know they can turn that into to more money. So we were talking and they're yep. like, well, we, we want to diversify. We want to figure out other places to go. And YouTube came up and their biggest question was, would that even work for us? Right. And, mm-hmm. and I think that that is a question that a lot of people have. It's what are the types of products that work and what are the types of products that just you've seen not work? Yeah. Okay. Good question. And I'll go through the filters that we tend to use when we're kind of looking at prospects and thinking about who we might work well with, et cetera. So that might really help out. So the first thing we need to make sure is that the actual product itself is innovative. Um, and it needs to be something whereby the public will see it and think that's cool. That's kind of got something new and I can see myself investing in it. And, and that's kind of an, a relatively obvious place to start. If it's the same as everybody else, or you have seen the same product time and time again, then you've got to be doing something really special to make sure you have a, a good converting offer there. Um, but innovation can really, really help just that because you've got to think about the creative. And if you've got a really good piece of video ad there that you can use as your as your video and it's showing an innovative product, it's just going to really help with the conversion rates. Um, we tend to also look for a good margin. So with the company you've just been mentioning, um, then of course, if, if they're getting, seeing huge growth, hopefully that margin is going to be big enough. Now, ideally you would have it like three X, four X, what the cost of goods would be, but, um, that's not always possible. (laughs) So it's not to say that it's not going to work. It's just more a case of this is like the ideal qualification that we would like to see as like a high um, margin rate, because when you're ever starting a new platform, 
and this kind of goes for YouTube especially, is because you've got the video and you've got the running the ads. Both bits are quite difficult to get right. Compared to someone like Facebook, you have that room for maneuver because it's still so cheap on Facebook. Um, so you can kind of work it out as you go. And also the targeting your audience is sometimes a little bit easier. Um, so if you try and compare it to Facebook, then it can be a little bit easier sometimes to get it, get started. But if you can dial in YouTube from the very beginning and, and know what you're doing, then it can really give you huge growth. So the margin is important because you're going to need that to find out what you're doing on, on YouTube. The, the third thing we tend to look for is a really good audience. Um, now, if you've already got a huge amount of traffic going to your website, then it's a very good idea to start running remarketing ads um, to that audience. So you can say, right, okay, people that have got to my checkout page and didn't buy, and then maybe take another audience of people that got to the sales page but didn't buy, um, and then kind of work it backwards to the point at which someone's got to your website or someone's got to a blog post or an article post, um, and work it all the way backwards to the point at which you kind of dialed it in so that should someone come from your original source of traffic, let's say it's Facebook or Instagram, you can then re-engage that traffic with YouTube ads. So it just gives that like omnipresent feel um, because that means you can immediately just to re-engage your audience and just look everywhere and it's great for brand um, and it's obviously um, great for ROI because you're going to be getting in front of people that are very close to buying anyway. Um, the second type of audience is that search type audience. So you want to look at what are they searching? Are they kind of reviewing certain products on YouTube? Um, have, are they kind of in certain in-market audiences? So these are audiences that Google um, will be building all the time automatically. And these in-market audiences you can select and choose to run in your adverts. So you can so you can have these in-market audiences, select them as part of your targeting. You've got keyword targeting. Um, you've got your placement targeting, which is where you can select individual videos should you wish. Um, there's something called custom intent, which is really powerful. So that means you can take all the keywords that someone's been typing in on Google and you can say, okay, from all the people that have typed in these keywords on Google, I want to build a list of them. Um, and that's kind of called a custom intent audience. And then you can use that custom intent audience to show YouTube ads to that audience. So there's some really clever ways, um, of building audiences and you can do it with, um, Custom affinity audiences is another option where you can say, if people are going to these types of websites, build an audience for me and I'll run my ads to those people as well. Um, and you've got what we call like similar audiences, which is very similar to lookalike audiences. There's all these different audiences you can get in front of. And um, if you know that people are going to YouTube and looking for information about the products that you offer, that's a really good indicator that YouTube ads are going to work really well for you. The... Another thing moving on from audience is making sure that we've got a story behind the brand um, and some sort of hook um, or what I call a tipping point. So it's it's that point at which you know the, the product you're selling is good enough for someone to think, actually, yeah, because of something you've just said in the video or because cause like, there's always going to be some point at which someone says, okay, yeah, I'm going to go and buy this. And if you can identify that moment where someone says, okay, yeah, I'm going to buy it or yeah, okay, this is right for me. If you can identify what that thing is that makes people realize that, then if you can get that in your video ad, then you'll find that you're high, you'll get your conversion rates to be extremely high with your videos. So it's, it's trying to find that kind of story about the product itself um, and try and find something amazing about it, but try, but at the same time wrapping it up so that people buy into that story as well. So, um, I've just been recently consulting with a company that have a product that freshen, freshens your breath. Um, it's a really clever product. I can't really tell too much about it because um, it's, in, it's in its infancy of, of launching. Um, but it, it's, a, it's a really interesting product. Um, and the, it freshens your breath in a very particular way. And it makes, when you take, the, um, take this product, it actually makes you giggle. Um, not, in a, <laughs> not in a way that's um, like the actual product itself is, is causing that, but it's just a funny something funny happens when you, when you use this product. And we were talking about it and, and working out what sort of message or what sort of story can build into it. And really what we realized is there was an audience on YouTube, which is all about dating and dating services. And it could be the perfect product to build in a story where we talk about, this is the perfect product to have on a first date, because you might be able to then use that product to 
freshen each other's breath um, straight after your first date. And it could be the perfect moment to um, build in a story about having your first kiss, almost that type of scenario. So this product wasn't designed for that, but the story that we can bring in about the product makes it very easy for that awkward moment um, that lots of people experience in the first dates. That could be the perfect product to be used in that scenario. And it's just trying to work out that um, that hook or that tipping point. And if you can get that right, then all the content you create around your videos doesn't need to be like, Hey, look at this product and look how good it is. Instead you can say, okay, well, here's the three top tips for your next or day or your, for your first date. Um, and you can create videos that are actually really engaging and, and really interesting. And it just so happens the product just fits that message and that story so much more effectively. So if you have a good story or a good, um, tipping point, we'll call it, then that is a, as a really big play or a really big part of a campaign. And that's, if you have that, it just does make things a lot, lot easier to sell the item and, um, and make it a lot easier. And then obviously after that, then we're looking at, um, things like a really solid sales funnel and a really good, um, amount of spend for proof. But, uh, those ones are normally going to be dulled in. If people know they're selling products well on Facebook and Instagram already, then YouTube shouldn't be too much of a stretch. And um, the sales process, like once someone's got to the website, that should be pretty slick. Um, and so that's not necessarily too much of a consideration in this instance, because um, YouTube will just fall into that category as well. Sure. No, that that, that makes sense. I think uh, I love you focusing on the story because that is so important from a conversion perspective, from differentiating yourself. Generally, the companies that, uh, that that are having the most success and have the actual ability to scale up with an e-commerce product are the ones that are innovative and that do tell a story, right? So being able to transfer mm-hmm. those innovative companies that are already scaling up over to YouTube makes a lot of sense. I always think of a company uh, called Pure Vita Bracelets based out of San Diego. They sell little string bracelets, but mm-hmm. the... If you ever talk to anybody who has bought one, they're never talking about the bracelets. They're always talking about the story of how these bracelets came from Costa Rica and that they're creating jobs for artisan uh, workers in Costa Rica. That's always the the story people hear. And it's that's the tipping yeah. point, right? That's the tipping point. People hear that. They're like, oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, and it also creates jobs for these people. That's very cool. Um, yeah. Exactly. I mean, we, we're doing some work with a company that sells a lot of products around um, grooming your beard if you grow a beard. Mm-hmm. And um, we're talking to them, and it feels like there's lots of people out there now, lots of like lots of um, products and service, uh, not necessarily necessary services, but there's lots of products and communities out there already around these products. And it's how do you stand out? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that podcast. And if you want to get more information and more great content just like that, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You'll see the button on the video right now.